that we are going to see about the ozone hole. Ozone hole does not mean that there is a hole in the ozone. It means the absence of ozone molecules in certain areas around the earth which is happening in the atmosphere and in a very specific layer of the atmosphere namely the stratosphere. Right? Let us try to understand how the ozone hole is coming about. Well, in order to understand what is the ozone hole, we must first understand the presence of ozone in the atmosphere and what role it does. This is our sun. You know that the sun gives out many different kinds of radiation into the atmosphere. Some of them are infrared, some of them are X-rays, some of them which you can see, you call it as visible and some of them are ultraviolet radiations, UV rays. And UV is of three types, UV, A, UV, B and UV, C, in which UV, C kind of radiation is extremely dangerous. If we are directly exposed to this particular kind of radiation, it becomes very very harmful to our skin and can lead to skin cancer. And that is why our earth has a natural protective mechanism around it called as the ozone layer, which is filled with molecules of ozone and serve to filter out the ultraviolet radiation from directly entering into the earth's atmosphere and affecting the living beings. Now how does this all work about? We are going to see now. So, this is our sun, which is letting out a large amount of radiation, namely X-ray, UV radiation, IR radiation, visible light which you can see, and all sorts of cosmic radiations into the earth. And the only thing protecting us from direct exposure from all of these intense radiations is our atmosphere which surrounds the planet. And now we are focusing on only one particular layer in the atmosphere which is the ozone layer which I have shown here. Okay, this is the ozone layer which is nothing but three molecules of oxygen. Now let's see what happens when ultraviolet radiation hits an ozone molecule. An ozone molecule means there are three oxygen atoms. Now let's draw it again. So I have a UV radiation hitting an ozone molecule here, O3. What happens is it immediately splits up and you will have two oxygen molecules and one oxygen molecule which breaks away. So here you have O2 and here you have only O. And this O will then is free to roam about in the atmosphere until it comes into contact with another two molecules of ozone, oxygen and then it becomes three molecules of oxygen which is O3 and that's how Oxygen and ozone have a natural equilibrium in the atmosphere and within the atmosphere there is a lot of further atmospheric chemistry which is very very interesting but we need not go very deep into that for the scope of this lecture this much is enough okay the industrial revolution started and human beings started using specific chemicals, especially one particular chemical called as chlorofluorocarbon, CFC, which not only persists in the environment within the earth, but has a problem because it was widely used in the 60s and 70s in aerosol cans, in refrigerators and in any other cooling devices where this was used to circulate and this molecule when released it has the habit of going and settling down in the upper regions of the atmosphere right where ozone molecules are most prevalent. Now what happens there? 
once the CFC molecule, which is nothing but chloro fluoro carbon. Well, here is the problem, chloro. Now CFC is not the only molecule which is problematic. There is another molecule called BFC. Only here, the difference is here, B is bromine. So bromofluorocarbons and chlorofluorocarbons. And here we are going to see about chlorofluorocarbons. When chlorofluorocarbons go up into the atmosphere, there is a very unique problem which is going to happen. Okay, now CFC is released by human activities into the stratosphere, which is a layer in the Earth's atmosphere. When ultraviolet radiation falls on CFC molecules, the CFC, the chlorine from the CFC is separated and is now free to roam around in the atmosphere as a singular molecule. But when chlorine comes across ozone, which is also in the stratosphere, what happens is, ozone, as I already told you, consists of three molecules of oxygen and chlorine reacts with this ozone taking away one molecule of oxygen thereby forming chlorine monoxide leaving behind two molecules of oxygen which is two. The result of this reaction is that ozone is destroyed. One molecule of ozone is destroyed. Now, chlorine, this reaction further, now we have chlorine with an oxygen molecule. Now, chlorine monoxide is freely running around in the stratosphere till it comes across another singular oxygen molecule wherein this chlorine is released and you have the formation of oxygen molecule and chlorine is now free to react with another molecule of ozone. Again, breaking it into singular molecule of oxygen with a chlorine and an O2. Now, one single chlorine molecule is thus capable of destroying several molecules of ozone without itself changing at all. Because at the end of the reaction, chlorine comes out unscathed and unaffected. This means that this kind of reaction is a catalytic reaction. So far we have seen how chlorofluorocarbons which persist in the stratosphere go ahead and destroy ozone into oxygen molecule and chlorine monoxide and then this further when reacting with oxygen will again form O2 leaving the chlorine free to again react with a fresh ozone molecule. This keeps happening as a catalytic cycle till the chlorine persists in the stratosphere and until such time that chlorine forms compounds with the other chemicals which are present in the atmosphere and goes out of the stratosphere. But the problem does not end there because anthropogenic activities are continuously emitting chlorofluorocarbons at a very very rapid rate and they all will react with the ozone present in the stratosphere and the potential of one chlorine atom is high enough to destroy several ozone so what are the effects of this ozone hole since there is an absence of ozone molecules there is nothing preventing the ultraviolet radiation from entering into the earth's atmosphere and hitting us and when they hit us or animals or plants they have different kinds of effects and this could lead to skin cancer in human beings. In order to prevent this uh, effect of the ozone hole when this disease was first discovered over the Antarctica, what they suggested, the different nations of the world, they came together and signed what is known popularly as the Montreal Protocol in 19... 
seven. The nations of the world, they joined together and signed this protocol, which is a method, and they made a promise to find an alternative for chlorofluorocarbons, which was creating such a big problem in the stratosphere, depleting the ozone layer. So ozone depletion was recognized as a global environmental problem, and this particular formation of this particular group ensured that they will find alternatives for chlorofluorocarbons and other molecules which were depleting the ozone layer. That were the major points of ozone hole. Okay. Okay. So how do you answer a question on the ozone hole? If the ozone depletion or what are the emission, the causes and effects of ozone hole, etc. is given. How do you construct an answer and how do you write the key points? First step is to answer what causes the or what is the ozone hole. So you will have to define the ozone hole as the absence of oxygen, ozone molecules in the stratosphere within the atmospheric layer. Once you have defined it, number two, you have now defined it. So number two, who or what are the causative agents of the ozone hole. So you will have to mention about CFCs and VFCs. Expand them if you remember them. CFCs are the prions and VFCs are the halons. Chlorofluorocarbon and bromofluorocarbon. Once you have done that, the next step is to explain the chemistry which I have explained in the lecture, in this particular lecture I have explained how it is carried about. So write the chemistry of ozone hole formation or write about the chemistry of how chlorofluorocarbons destroy the ozone molecules and then go on to destroy other ozone molecules which results in a catalytic reaction. So mention the word catalytic Analytic reaction is very very important. Once you have done that, the next step is to write about the effects of the depletion of ozone layer. Here you will have to mention about UVA, UVB, UVC and about skin cancer. Once you have done that, then you will have to write what now? What now? Now we have what is called as the Montreal Protocol which was signed in 1987 and came into effect in 1989 and this protocol was signed in by the countries to find alternatives to CFC BFCs and other ozone depleting substances. So, I hope you have understood about the ozone layer problem and will be able to write a very good answer. Thank you.